Thanks for joining us this afternoon on Go Erie Live. We're talking about the Erie Zoo and what's new. Thanks for joining this week's Go Erie Live discussion. Today, Erie Times News online reporter Sarah Grafsky will be talking with Scott Mitchell, Executive Director of the Erie Zoo. I'm Christopher Millett and I'll be moderating your Go Erie Live comments. Thanks to Gannon University for sponsoring these live discussions every week. Enjoy the conversation. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Scott, for being here this morning, well, here. this afternoon. So we are talking about the Erie Zoo and everything um, that is coming up here, including um, the exciting Wild Open Spaces campaign. Lots of fun stuff. But before we get to the nuts and bolts, um, and we have kind of, you know, sh uh, told you guys that this is coming, we have a visitor here today. This is Oliver. 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 Yes. He is a. Ooh, he just feels so weird. <laughs> he is a ball python. Um, he's our little friend. So tell us he, about Oliver. He is a handsome boy. He is a handsome yes, boy. Look at him. He's very, active. He is very active this morning. He is um, one of several that we have, and um, they're also called the royal python because okay. of their beautiful coloration. They've got that beautiful pattern. Yeah. And they're an African species. Um, and they get their name ball python primarily because, as you can see, he's kind of rolled up into yes. a ball. And when he really... Oh, he's looking at me! <laughs> when he really feels <laughs> threatened, then he really, really rolls into a tight ball. Okay. Actually, oh. he wasn't looking at you. He's sniffing you. Oh, is he? Yes. They use their tongue to sniff. Okay. So That's how he's, like, checking out the exactly, space? Exactly. Because uh, he'll... he'll uh, it's, it's forked, so it adds more surface area. Wow. So he'll put... Uh, he'll sniff you, smell you, and then yes. he puts his tongue back in his mouth. He's got two little ho holes in the roof of his mouth. And uh, he inserts the tongue there, and he can tell who you are, what you are, and oh my gosh. you know probably what you had for breakfast. So, how old is he? Uh, he's about 11 years old, and um, again, we have one Aussie that is really, really old. He's okay. in his 20s, which is really getting up there in age for a ball python. Now, this is a kind of a weird question, but like, what does he eat? Little pieces of protein. Does he? Yes, he does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not so, people, right? <laughs> not people. No, they're small pieces of protein. So, so Scott, and this is something that I love about our zoo. Um, tell us about like ambassador animals mm -hmm. like Oliver. You guys. We have a lot of these guys that go into classrooms. They go into schools. They go into uh, into our classrooms. Um, we have some will be at the Italian Fest this weekend. Okay. They'll be at Tall Ships, and so it really brings nature to life. And uh, you can really get somebody's attention, like yours, yes. uh, when uh, when you bring a live animal into the equation. Now, how does how do you train him to be able to come in and see us? Uh, some of it's just pure handling. So uh -huh. if he's used to being handled and touched and so forth, um, that goes a long way. Um, but there are other things that our keepers do to train them to perform different behaviors and so forth that would be typical to what they might have in the wild. Oliver, you are a very, very cute little boy. <laughs> what are some of the other like ambassador animals that you guys have? Oh gosh, everything you can think of. We have uh, a, a cavy, we have um, a, a, Europe, a Eurasian lynx that's brand new, Toby, he's a real sweetheart. Uh, lots of species of snakes, birds, uh -huh. um, all kinds of fun things. And you guys do like all kinds of classes and stuff with them too, right? We, yeah, uh, actually our biggest hit now is Toby, our Eurasian lynx who's been trained to walk on a leash. Oh! And so he's joined a couple classrooms already. Very nice. Uh, so we, we have quite a few now that um, can really bring nature to life. Okay, so we are going to bid Oliver adieu, farewell, and we are going to get to the nuts and bolts, what we're here to talk about. Um, so let's discuss wild open spaces. Now, the last time we met was, well, I wasn't here, but April, um, and you guys announced the campaign. I mean, mm -hmm. it was huge. We got so much great interest and, you know, people were, how can we help? What now? I mean, what what's the status of the update here? Well, we're um, really in the public phase of this process. So we're really encouraging people to, to contribute. They can go online to eriezoo.org. Um, they can do it right on the zoo grounds. There's ways that they can help there. Uh, and a lot of people will just send a check with a little note that says, I'd like this to go to whatever with people that make gifts over multiple years. And so this is the time for, everybody out there to be able to help their zoo and uh, as we would said we haven't done a capital campaign in over 25 years so we haven't been out knocking on people's doors in a long time right so we're hoping people help up and, and support so us. it was a okay help me with the numbers here 10 million dollar project 10 million dollar campaign okay and uh, as as of this date we're just a hair shy of seven million dollars okay pledged. so we've made a, a great headway but you know those last couple million are always the hard ones to get mm -hmm. so. so seven million and how have you guys kind of secured that um, some of it was a state grant for the ice arena which mm -hmm. is under construction right now that should open in November um, and then uh, the rest of it is all private funding so we've had families individual donors uh, foundations 
friends, uh, all kinds of people that have contributed at one level or another. That's amazing. What is what has the response been from the public? Very positive. Uh, everybody, uh, because we haven't asked in a long time, yes, been very supportive. Absolutely. And uh, and and some pretty su amazing gifts. Uh, uh, really good size, six figure, seven figure gifts that have been so important to help with all that momentum. Mm -hmm. And like Scott was saying, like frequent zoo visitors, like my family, mm -hmm. will go to the train and all of the employees are wearing the campaign t-shirts and you can round up. I mean, just little, I mean, every penny, every dollar counts. Yeah, absolutely. You, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about what the actual project is, Scott. Um, we have some uh, maps and diagrams here uh, to kind of give you guys more of a visualization of what you can expect. So to give you some perspectives quickly, this is West 38th Street. Um, that building is the ice arena. This is the old main zoo building. Okay. This is the office. And our current front gate is right about there. Okay. Now through this process, we've identified several different projects. Um, the first of which was the ice arena, which was a $2 million state um, ICP grant that uh, we were awarded. And as I say, it's, it's well under construction and, and uh, moving along uh, pretty well. Um, and so that's a, a, the first thing that people are going to see. Another one was we had a donor that helped us with this old main zoo building. Um, without getting into all the perspective, there's a lot happening up here in the front. Mm -hmm. And that building is, uh, was 1930. It yes. Was, so it's been there a long time. Yes. And it's an iconic structure. It is. And so we really felt it was important to preserve that. And so that project should start um, maybe this week. Oh, wow. We should be getting, so people are seeing things happen right away. That's great. Yeah. So um, one of the first ones um, that we'll probably tackle is um, the bear exhibit. And it's in the current space where the bears um, used to be. Right. People will remember that. And so we'll take that moat and the corral. So it'll be um, two new spaces and they'll be much larger. And uh, people, we heard repeatedly when we went out to the public for our feasibility study that they want to see bears again. Yes. So the species we're going to hopefully get is something called a sloth bear. It's an Asian species. We've never had them. They're endangered. We've got other zoos that are working with us to help because they're interested in breeding programs for them because they're an endangered species. The one challenge is Apparently, they're the smartest of all bears. Oh. <laughs> so they would make you smarter than the average bear. <laughs> Boo -boo. Um, they, uh, they, so they, they're, they're, we're going to have to outsmart the bears. Yeah. But, uh, we've got several family gifts um, on, on tap for that, and we need to raise some more for that, but that's a big one as well. So this, just to put this into perspective, this is where the links are right, now. Exactly. Okay, okay yep, all yep. right. Then another big component of it is this section here in the middle of the zoo, which we're calling the heart of the zoo. and. That is get, kind of give you some perspectives here. Uh, this right about here is Monkey Island. Okay, all right. And this is about where the giraffe house okay. is. Okay. So uh, one component, we'll add some new species here, one being a tree kangaroo, and the other one we've kind of left open. Okay. Because if someone comes to us and says, I love sloths, okay, yeah. so <laughs> you could help us build that. Right, field. right. And so we that could be, that's independent of pretty much everything else, so that'll be easy enough. We've got a large central plaza. Uh, you'll hear repeatedly throughout here that um, we have revenue opportunities and we need to be able to pay the bills. Yes. So there'll, there'll be things that we're doing that are designed to help maintain all of this. And so this central plaza will be able to be tented, rentable. Events. Um, we have our first wedding, this full Ooh. regular wedding this year How in September. Awesome. And uh, it's about this location or real close to it. So we think that's got some opportunity. Um, we have a wine dinner coming up as well. And so this would be a space that would be really a great space for that. Very neat. Uh, this is a new concession stand and restrooms. The ones that are there are just uh, really, they're 50 years old. Right. They really need to be redone. Uh -huh. The neat thing is um, this is Mill Creek and the There'll be glass here and glass here, so you'll be able to look out of the restaurant into the creek or see the creek. But you'll also be able to look into this exhibit. Uh, and that exhibit um, is a species, new species of monkey, which we haven't had a colobus monkey. Wow. I had one fur po uh, person I met with said they, reminder of the Lady Gaga of monkeys. <laughs> I the okay. lady, Ga lady Gaga monkeys. Okay, there you go. I guess so. They're beautiful, black and white, long flowing hair. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, and so a viewing area here, a playroom, and a bedroom. Wow. Uh, but this, what we've decided to do, this is the walkway that comes down from the rhinos. Rhin yes. Uh -huh. And there's a real high platform that kind of you can look out over the creek. Right. That's 20 feet in the air. So we want to take this as mesh. We want to take it to 30 feet. Okay. So at that location, you'll be able to see the monkeys in the trees. Oh, nice. 
Nice. Yeah, and so this will start at the top of the roof line and go up 30 feet. So it'll, it'll really idea. provide a neat view. And we have a sponsor or a family that has uh, donated enough to make that possible. They like so. the Lady Gaga monkeys. They, they like monkeys, That's yes. That's great, you okay. Bet. So uh, another area that really people are focused on, there's a couple of other things. We've got a new veterinary center and commissary here. Okay. Um, but this area out here is really what people are focusing yes. on. And this is made possible. This is where there's a parking lot across the street from the main entrance of the zoo, and that's what this is. Okay. And what's made that possible is we purchased this piece of property a number of years ago. Yes. It's right behind the credit union. And we worked with the city. We had a lease and owned some of this property. And then we worked with the city to acquire this property, so we have a lease on that. So all of these pieces of property we can convert into parking. This already is a parking lot, as is this. Uh, we can convert them to parking and then connect them all with a, a handicapped accessible walkway and then people will walk through the tunnel to the new front entrance. That's amazing. And the, um, the, the people ask about the tunnel. It exists. It was put in right here when 38th Street was realigned. Oh, in, so it's already... It's already there. That's amazing. Yeah, and some people said, geez, it seems like a long walk from you know here to the front gate. It's no longer no. than the ice rink. And what four-year-old's not going to want to walk through the tunnel? Right. They're, that's <laughs> going to be part of the process. You know exactly. That. I do know that. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um, so they'll come to the new front gate. We needed a new front gate and gift shop. Yes. Uh, the, the gate's just not adequate. And But we're also designing it to be efficient. So one, we can have four lanes or we can have one with one person also running the gift shop. Our gift shop is uh, over 60 years old yes. and really in tough shape and small. We've got some new people running it, really bright folks, and we've done a great job providing new products. And we even sell some things online. And uh, so this, I think it's going to be like four times the size of our current wow. gift shop. But the big addition oh, is, great. is this, and that's the parking lot across the street, and that's a new giraffe exhibit. Yes. And people are really excited yes. about Yes, <laughs> that They've is been, what we've heard. They have been part of us forever, part of our logo and everything. <laughs> so um, it would include a new giraffe barn, and we need a new giraffe barn um, to keep up with AZA standards, our accreditation standards. Uh, we'll provide walk, catwalks up above so our, our keepers can get up to the giraffe's height, which mm -hmm. is much safer um, and much easier for our veterinary staff to, to work with them. We can take blood, we can do blood pressures, we can do all kinds of things, but you have to do it up and around the head. Yes. So this, this yes. will provide some real safety. I remember you telling me for Nigel, um, Dr. Palumbo was like trying to teach him to bend down so he, she could have access to his ears and Correct. such. So yeah. now that kind now of... We can help eliminate yes. that. Right. Uh, so the building will be big enough and so, and so we'll be able to have a small herd of giraffes. Hopefully a, f a male and a couple of females. Mm -hmm. We'll also have some other species that could be in here. Mm -hmm. um, some antelope or gazelle and perhaps a bird. So have some ground birds, secretary birds, things like that. Uh, to give you some perspective, the current giraffe yard is about that big. That is so amazing. So it's like five or six times the size of that, that yard. That is so great. Uh, again, we'll have a handicapped accessible walkway up to a pavilion here and that pavilion's a, a pretty cool space. Yes. It's, we'll get you up to the height of the giraffes and we'll be able to do giraffe feeding there. So the giraffes will come over and you'll be able to purchase something that um, to, uh, probably stuff like endive. Uh, there's some biscuits also that the giraffes will eat. And uh, so it, and it's covered, it's a covered patio. And as you can see, it's probably gonna be, it could handle 40 to 50 people. That's so amazing. That'd be a pretty neat place to have a oh, party. Yes. If you wanted to have a private function, you know, if you had, if you're a financial planner and you wanted to have some of your top clients, to <laughs> right? Have uh, have pa uh, hors d'oeuvres with the giraffe. That would be pretty pretty cool space. So again, it's an, another opportunity to generate some revenue for the zoo and, and the giraffes. Uh, new train station and, and concession area there as well. So there's a lot going on. In Absolutely. This so um, as far as like the giraffe area goes, mm -hmm. a lot of people have said, you know, when are you guys going to start or yes. if you know you guys Be start? because that's such a big project we still have to, to raise some money for that right. and also um we do have to make some arrangements for nigel it's gonna right. be not too long before he's gonna have to go he's getting big and there there's limits to how tall a giraffe can be to be shipped and he wouldn't be recommended to breed and we would want a group that could so he'll head out 
could be this fall, but more likely it'll be next spring. Okay. And head out to a new zoo to start a, uh, uh, his life in a new facility. And then it could take some time to acquire another another giraffe. This right. project to, to, to do all of this work wouldn't be horrible. The barn's going to be quite a project. Yeah, and all of this stuff over here is going to be quite a project. So um, it could take some time. Yes. Uh, the other thing we're trying to be, we're, we're, small we're not a big place, right, you know, right and we have two projects going on simultaneously or will have when the main zoo building starts and so we have to be careful not to tear too much up of the zoo up at one time or it just doesn't become a fun place yes. to go uh, yeah so, right and so we'll probably do them one at a time and i suspect it could be either the colobus or the bears would be first mm -hmm. because they're kind of independent of, mm -hmm. the, of the other projects uh, but we'll see how, how, the, how the projects unfurl. The other component of it is zoo construction is a little bit different than building an office building. Um, <laughs> I would <yeah>, imagine. <laughs> when we do the bears, there'll be a lot of rock work. Okay. And for example, there might only be four or five rock companies in the country. Right. So you're somewhat beholden to their schedule. Uh, likewise, the, the mesh that you, know, you see at the Saimang area, the orangutan uh -huh. area, that mesh there's only a couple of contractors in the country that do that so uh same thing holds true we have to try to find a window in their schedule that works for them and for us so sometimes the the timing of a project can be a little bit out of our hands another question about the giraffes and we have talked about this before that there's only a limited amount of space will there only be i mean i'm going to assume two giraffes are able because you were telling me the AZA requires you to have so much space mm -hmm. for specific animals. It, we would suspect that we could probably have a male and two females okay. would be the size. Okay. Um, and then again, hopefully have little ones. We've, yes. had, we've had little ones How over fun. the years and uh, um, it, it, we've, it's a, we would hope to have uh, an opportunity to have some more little ones again. Um, okay, switching back to bears because mm -hmm. the, like you, we talked about that is so popular. Yep. Um, Tell, explain, and you and I discuss this all the time, but very rarely does it make the story, and this is just fascinating to me, how you guys go about picking sloth bears mm -hmm. and then go about acquiring them. Sure. Um, so what, what the, our folks fell in love with them at the National Zoo. They went to, they went to. <laughs> in DC, pick, right? Yes, they went to pick up our lion, our new lion girls, and um, they saw them there, and the folks at the National Zoo really, uh, suggested that we look into sloth bears. Uh -huh. we, they told them we were going to be looking into bears, and um, they're they've been offering to help uh, help us acquire them. But th what happens is that the, in our world, it's all about genetics. So what we'll do is we'll we, we put a request in as many as a couple of years in advance for a species, and then the. Um, there's a group of people that get together that uh, they do what they call is a stud book and they decide that um, the they decide which which animals go to which zoo right and they'll put the a proper pairing together and uh, it's um, sometimes a little bit out of our control but mm -hmm. uh, w for example the colobus we've already put in a request for colobus and we don't know exactly when we're going to get them but we've already put a request in for that and I mean the like the the waiting list, like you said, it's what years out sometimes. When we did our orangutans, I think we were three years out. Yes. For those, and so it, it, again, when you're there's a limited number of them in captivity, and you want to get a, a good pair that will be compatible. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit out of our control, um, but there are things that we can do to help. Uh, as an example, our serval. We have a female female serval, and we're AZA accredited, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, which is. To give you some perspectives, a long, long answer, but there's a lot of, there's about 25, 22, 2,500 animal exhibitors in the, in the, in the country that could literally be a guy with a bear, <laughs> and, right. or the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> sure. So it's a wide range. But of those 20, almost 2,500 animal facilities, USDA animal facilities, only about 220 are accredited. Okay. So it puts us in the top 10 percent in the country. Wow. That allows us to do and acquire animals from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So we have a female serval, uh, Summer, and she is... Um, very cute, by the very way. Very cute <laughs> and genetically very important. Okay. Um, she could be paired with any male in the country except wow. her father. Well, we didn't want to stop there. So we talked with the serval people and they suggested we 
look elsewhere. So we just imported a male serval from South Africa, and we're able to do that because we're accredited. Mm -hmm. So genetically, that pair, he has no representation here in the country, that pair may be, may be one of the most important in the country, if not the world. That's amazing. Yeah, right here, the little Eurasian. Right, yeah. I know. And a yeah. lot of people, and I, I would really like to stress this because I, you know, it's been a, this has been a, a long time coming, that this was truly, and this master plan, these plans that you've created were truly grassroots because you went out mm -hmm. and at basically surveyed people and asked what do you want to see and yeah. this is exactly what they said yeah we and there were certain things that we felt important giraffes right. were important we know people love giraffes and yes so that was kind of a no-brainer right. right away we didn't even have to go much further than that but we did hear pretty frequently bears and monkeys that was bears, what bears and, and monkeys. monkeys that's what they wanted and uh, so we we accomplished as much of that as we could in this setting and um, uh, again, we have to keep in mind the revenue component of things, so we try to balance that uh, because those those every time you buy a box box of popcorn at the zoo, you help keep the zoo going. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's and a lot of the what we have heard is you know how can we help? How mm -hmm. can we? And like you had said, you know we want the public help. How send a check? You know sure. go to the zoo. What? Absolutely. Um, if you go to eriezoo.org, you'll see it. It's right there when you when you click to the page. It has wild open spaces. There's actually a video that we created there. It's only about four minutes, so you can check that out as well. It actually will show you pictures of sloth bears and colobus monkeys, and so it really gives you some ideas of the kinds of things we're doing. So that's the easiest way to mm -hmm. go about it. You can. Uh, you could help that way. Um, we've had some people that have suggested they're going to uh, write a check um, with the new Erie Gives plan. Oh, you can write checks nice. through okay. Erie Gives. And that's and this week, next, next week? Next week. Yeah, and so week. you could, there's a certain date that you can do that. You can check that out at Erie, at Erie Gives. And um, so we've had people that have suggested that. Yeah. Um, we have people that um, we've sent mailings and so forth to, mm -hmm. and, or you can stop at the zoo office. And there's a, a, a pledge form that you can fill out, and many people are doing multiple year pledge forms. So That's many, great. so many dollars a year over three years or something. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, and I think this is fabulous as well. You guys have been doing, and you mentioned it, like you know, when you were talking about the event space, uh, more like wine dinners, and mm -hmm. I feel as that like um, the lions, tigers, and beers, mm -hmm. and Galapazuza, and you know, what's the impetus behind that? Well, obviously, there, there are new ways to generate funding for the zoo. That's, right. that's the important part of right. it. But some of these events are different um, different groups of people. Uh -huh. uh, Lions, Tigers, and Beers is a little bit of a younger demographic. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's a different price point than mm -hmm. the gala, but it has become just as popular. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, uh, jeans and flannels and, um, you know, some uh, two or three bands and food trucks. Yes. So it's, it's an entirely different market, and it might be people that are between um, coming as a kid and having kids uh -huh. and we've seen a lot of that so that's a nice opportunity to get to that market again um, these wine dinners we're doing with the cork um, and they're wonderful people to work with and so we've got one scheduled um, for August and there's not very many tickets left so you can yes. check those out online uh, and then we also hope to do one for Valentine's Day oh that and might be popular it might be popular yeah. and generally speaking they're a, 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 an interesting animal program is incorporated into it. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but you know, it is, it's such, an, you know, when it, it's a different way to experience, mm -hmm. and I think that's why people love it so much, you know? It, you can come to the zoo without your kids. Yeah, that's right. That's not a bad thing. That's, that's not, not a bad, bad thing. thing, but it is a, an opportunity. And because there's enough people there, you can really interact with family and friends and clients and all mm -hmm. of those kinds of things in a pretty casual setting. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, um, another thing I wanted to ask you about, I feel like I had like a list in my head. Um, Ollie, how is Ollie doing? I've had so many, many people say, where, you know, how is he doing in San Francisco? He's doing great. They've sent us several updates on him. Okay. Uh, he has met his girlfriend. He's got a girlfriend. He has, and you know. Um, <laughs> Things are going well. Things are going well. Good. Yeah, he's 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 been he's very shy. Yes, he's been pretty bashful, uh, but he's he's starting to come out of his shell now, Good. and they'll be together on a more regular basis soon enough. But Good. he's he's doing doing quite well. Yeah. And so, also very quickly, recap babies anything we need to know about anything new this is a slower time of year for right. us because most of the babies tend to come in the spring but right. we've got a lot of uh, a lot of work ahead we are hopefully doing some artificial insemination programs oh this good year good out. good and um, we hope to have some other babies we're waiting for recommendations on some of them though we were just approved to breed penguins oh again good and my favorite pair is the female who was born at the zoo her name is Christmas <laughs> 
and her partner is Ricky Bobby. Oh. And he came from a zoo in or an aquarium in the south, oh, okay. obviously. And so <laughs> I said, Bobby. if we hatch two chicks, I'd, I'd never name animals, never. We, if we hatch two chicks, they're going to be shake and bake, <laughs> is what their names are going to be. <laughs> so, That's amazing. How is our porky pet doing? They're do, uh, doing well. Yes. And, and uh, they're on display now. They are. They're out and about and, and uh, doing well. He spends a little more time out of the box than okay. uh, mom and dad and or she. And um, so they've been, they've been doing quite well. They, they do feel, they do, you do notice them. Uh, you, you know why? The smell. <laughs> It is the smell, and I know that now. You experienced it firsthand. I experienced this firsthand. Yes, and you, you, yeah. So when you walk through the middle of the zoo, this is so funny because my husband came with us the other day, and he said, "It smells like onions. It's the porcupines." Yeah, they have a unique odor. All the so when you're walking road. through the middle yeah. of the zoo and you smell the onion smell or bo smell, well, yes, it is the porcupines. Yes, and I, <laughs> yeah, we we know exactly who's been working with them that day. You can tell. <laughs> Okay. All right, Scott. Anything else you want to add? No. Just really appreciate everybody's support. Yes. Uh, keep keep uh, abreast of all the things on uh, on Go Erie and Erie Times News. You know and, we will. Uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of things coming up that people are going to be excited about. So we'll try to keep you uh, tuned to what's going on. We're excited to hear. Thanks to everyone who joined in and uh, listened in to this week's Go Erie Live discussion. This video will be available for replay on the Go Erie Facebook page and on the Go Erie homepage. Thanks again to Gannon University for sponsoring this discussion and of course to Scott Mitchell for joining us today. You can find upcoming topics and guests on the Go Erie Facebook page each week. Thanks for listening. <laughs>